It's your daily dose of Donna. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys are all having an amazing day. It's Wednesday, January 24th. The sun has gone. The sun has gone. You guys, name the movie. Name the movie. The sun has gone to bed and so must I. Well, I really, really wish that I was able to fall asleep and sleep well last night. And I wasn't. A lot of you guys saw my stories yesterday. I purchased magnesium powder. I tried to be a cool TikToker and do my sleepy time cocktail. It's a little tart cherry juice. It's a little bit of, um, yes, sound of music. You got it. It's a little bit of that calm magnesium powder mixed in together with a little bit of like seltzer. I drank it. Then I went upstairs to watch Salt Lake City and also had even more magnesium. Then I decided at around 945, I'm also going to pop in a melatonin, like a one and a half milligrams of melatonin, like a tiny, tiny amount. And then I wasn't sleeping. (laughs) Like I fall asleep, but then I'm up every hour. And when I tell you last night was no different, it will be So interesting to see how many more days I can continue on this path before I officially have to check into a mental health ward, uh, be put on some sort of like a, what's the thing that that killed Michael Jackson? Propofol? Just to get a good night's sleep? Someone hook up some propofol? (laughs) Oh, I'm seeing your comments today. We're going to get into everything. Obviously, we're going to talk about Salt Lake City. We will talk about the Jeff Lewis and Sarah from Texas because I spoke about it yesterday and I got um, a lot of comments saying, why would you even bring it up without giving us the whole story? I will talk about it. I will share it. um, And then I will dive deeper on my Patreon, which I will release later, in addition to talking about what is on my Patreon list for today. We're going to talk about Scientology and Aaron. Remember, I told you that already. We're going to talk about um, Kite Baby. There was a big drama with the CEO of Kite Baby, which is like a baby um, company. And it also, you know, she, the CEO, really messed up. Like, talk about crisis management, right? We're going to talk about American Nightmare. We're going to talk about all of it. Um, Before that, though, of course, I want to remind you guys that this episode is, oh, 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 don't worry. I'm here. I'm coming. I'm hanging out with you guys. I just have to pull up my, here we go. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. I have to pull up the copy for ZipRecruiter. Now, you guys, have you heard of ZipRecruiter? If you were in a... Uh, position right now in your life where you're looking to hire for your company. If you're an employer, if you're an employee and you also need to hire, here's good news. You guys, ZipRecruiter has smart tools and features that help you find more qualified candidates fast. It's 2024. There is no reason to go through, you know, the yellow pages or handpicked resumes. Can I tell you that back when I used to work in casting, the first few years of casting, every single person that would be submitted for a project, every actor, I would get handheld pictures and resumes like submitted in an envelope and then the tapes to watch their, um, if we ever had reels of theirs, reels are like what actors used to, now when you think of reels, you think of Instagram, but actor reels used to be, you know, just their best, you know, clips from their performances. We would get them in cassette tapes. This wasn't even DVD days. We would freaking pop in cassette tapes. And then those of you, you guys, 1981 here born. So like you, you know, if you know, we would have one of those double v- VHSs. So we would put in the cassette tape of an audition. We would put in a blank tape and we would dub the auditions that we really liked from the day. Cause we would film them on a, like a camcorder that had a full VHS tape. These are like, this is back in the day. And we would dub and then we would send our favorites to producers by uh, like a courier. 
Things are so different now. You literally click of a button, the person gets the audition in a different country. It's amazing. Um, but ZipRecruiter is pivoting with the rest of the world and smart technology helps you. You guys can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Donna. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash D-A-N-A. Let ZipRecruiter help you conquer the best hiring, the biggest hiring challenge, finding qualified candidates. See why four out of five employees who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Donna. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash D-A-N-A for a free trial ZipRecruiter. Smartest way to hire. Thanks, ZipRecruiter, for sponsoring Daily Dose of Donna. All right. You guys have so many lovely, lovely suggestions for sleep. I will be reading all of these later. Don't you know? Don't you worry. I will get into this. Um, there's not that much crazy, crazy big pop culture news today because I think the whole reality TV landscape is focused on Salt Lake City. So we will definitely be talking about that for sure. Um, I will say, I will say, uh, we do have to cover Jeff Lewis Live, Sarah from Texas. You guys, Stassi was on Jeff Lewis Live today. I love Stassi Schroeder. I really do. Now, if you go back and watch old school Vanderpump, she was horrendous the first couple seasons, like horrendous. I rewatched it right around uh, Scandaval and it's like shocking, shocking her behavior. But she has really grown into someone that I find very appealing to watch. I think she's smart. I think she's an amazing businesswoman. I think she's entertaining. Um, she found herself a wonderful husband. He seems great from what we see, Bo. And then she has the most adorable little kiddos. So I really, really like Stassi. She was a guest on Jeff Lewis for the first time. And it was interesting. Here's one thing that I, I uh, did notice is that she is so adamant. Jeff was giving her so much crap because he kept talking about the fact that she needs to be back on the valley. You got to get on the valley. You got to get on the valley, which is, you know, the new... Um, like Vanderpump spinoff, right? Jax Taylor, Chris and Doty. And Stassi held her own. And I really appreciated this. She was like, I do not want to do a show. I do not want to enter anything that is not indicative of what my real life is. I don't want to have fake drama with people that aren't my friends. I don't want to go out and hang out with people who are not my friends. I want to, I I don't think reality TV is out of my future. I think she's smart because I think she knows she'll probably end up doing some sort of family reality show, which doesn't make me so happy. Maybe she'll do a reality show around her, like her career, which would make me happier because I worry about her family just getting completely torn apart. But she talked about how the only thing that she can see herself doing is something that really aligns with her reality. And MJ from Shaws of Sunset and Traders was the other co-host. And MJ is a real estate agent. She works for Mauricio at the comp at the agency, which is like such a, it's a tangled web, right? We all, it's like, it's like six degrees of Mauricio. Um, no, honestly, it's like, you know how they say six degrees of Kevin Bacon? Honestly, it's one degree of Jeff Lewis. Like the whole world, I've always said this, like always goes back to Jeff. So in this world. So Mercedes MJ was as a real estate agent and she was like, can I sell you on a house? And she was really pitching herself for Stassi. They were talking about moving to, so Stassi lives in the Hollywood Hills, right? She lives in a certain part of the Hollywood Hills, which is a beautiful area. It's not for me. It's never been, that, that area is not for me in terms of what I like. I don't like being up, up, up in the hills and really narrow little streets where you can't you know, go on walks outside, lots of coyotes, God knows what other kind of mountain lions, et cetera. But anyway, she um, was being pitched on Tarzana. And if you guys know the Valley, if you go, if you know like Hollywood, right? And you drive over Laurel Canyon towards the Valley, you land in the heart of Studio City. But if you go left, which is west, you continue, if you took Ventura Boulevard, which is like our main road here in the Valley, right? If you take Ventura Boulevard, you go past Studio City, you go into Sherman Oaks. Between Studio City and Sherman Oaks is where Jax's bar is, just to kind of give you guys an idea. Then you continue driving through Sherman Oaks. That's where I live. If you continue through Sherman Oaks, you end up in the next road is, I mean, the next town is Encino 
which Jeff, a lot of Jeff's clients are in Encino. That's where Kyle Richards lives. That's where Dorit Kemsley li lives. Um, Teddy Mellencamp, I'm trying to think. I'm sure so many other. Anna Marie, negative 8.5, lives in Encino. We know that. And then if you continue on, then you hit Tarzana. And that's where Stasi was saying that she would look because Tarzana is like the next, um, as, as MJ said correctly, Sherman Oaks is priced out. Like my neighborhood where I live, I cannot afford anymore. <laughs> like I would never be able to move into another house in my neighborhood. They're crazy overpriced, but Tarzana. So I can't wait to see it. Um, I can't wait to see what happens with Stasi's career, and I can't wait to see what happens on the Valley right now. As of right now, the Valley looks unwatchable based on its teaser, um, like the promo. I said it last night on Zach Peters Live. It looks just like a show for E. It doesn't look like a Bravo caliber show. But who's to know? Who's to know? Um, Jeff Lewis. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to preface this for everyone out there that is listening that has absolutely no effing clue who Sarah from Texas is, who Jeff Lewis obsessed is. You just maybe know who Jeff Lewis is. Let me share just a little bit of background. Um, Sarah from Texas is another podcaster slash content creator. She does a daily show. Um, at first, I believe it was just on Instagram, and then now it's um, sprouted out to all platforms. And her handle is called Jeff Lewis Obsessed. Okay. So it is 100% a very, it is a very uh, clear cut account that is tied to Jeff Lewis. Since she has started doing this, I do believe that she has branched out and talked about other things. She calls herself, she has like a reality water cooler is the name of her show. It's a little confusing because it's Jeff Lewis obsessed on podcasts. It's called reality. I don't know. Okay. She talks about a lot of things. Okay. But her show is based on Jeff Lewis. That's the, that's the meat of her show. Um, a lot of us, a lot of podcasters and content creators cover Jeff Lewis as well because Jeff Lewis is highly immersed in the Bravo reality TV world. He has a show, Hollywood House Lift. He has a daily show where he interviews multiple housewives constantly. He's on Radio Andy, Andy Cohen. He's on Watch What Happens Live multiple times. He is... Um, he opened up BravoCon. So clearly Jeff Lewis is very much part of a lot of our talks and, and he has great interviews. Like yesterday, Kyle Richards, we learned so much or today, Stassi. So anyway, um, so Sarah from Texas, um, Jeff Lewis obsessed is her show is based on Jeff and Jeff's world, right? So if you follow her enough, you know that that's the majority of her content. It really is. I mean, you can't deny that to anyone, right? You can't. And so then basically this is what happened. Just so now I don't get any comments in the comment section saying, you know, WTF, share at least what happened. All I know is this. Sarah has been a very, very uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, um, present person in Jeff's life lately, right? She goes to a lot of events. She'll fly. She lives in Texas, obviously Sarah from Texas, but she'll fly to, um, to hold on. Let me get this Michael Riley guy out of here because he is incredibly distracting. Um, she'll go to, other cities, like she'll go to New York for events. She'll go to Los Angeles for events. Um, she will travel to see people. She is not ashamed to say this. She is absolutely, um, she admits that she, you know, goes out of her way to follow Jeff Lewis and his events. And not only Jeff, she's a big supporter of a lot of Jeff's, what he calls chumps, right? If you listen to the show, you know them very well. There's Megan Weaver, there's Doug Buden, and then you have like the Paul and Patrice. You have the MJ, you have, um, um, now I can't think of anyone. So I'm a really good 
fan. Um, you have Monica Casey. You have Justin Martindale. So bad it's good with Ryan Bailey. Um, you have Carrie and Todd Lewis. There's a lot of them. Okay. If I forgot, I forgot. Paige, whatever. So anyway, she is definitely a, um, a big fan. And I guess what has been happening behind the scenes that I've not been privy to is that there's been a lot of chatter about boundary crossing. I guess Jeff and Jameson, Kelly Dodd. Okay, good. I guess um, Jeff had mentioned on a show a few weeks ago, I don't, I don't listen every day. I listen depending on what the day is, if I have time or if it's a great guest. But I guess on the 12th, which I don't know, he had mentioned something about boundary crossing where one of his fans was like going overboard in terms of his daughter, right, with her school, et cetera. Um, I, like I said, I didn't listen to that show, so I had no idea that was even out there. And I guess a lot of people were inferring that possibly it was Sarah from Texas. I don't believe it was but I don't know. I'm not her, but I don't believe it was. And I never even really knew about this side. I don't, I haven't seen any chatter about her talking about that, et cetera. But regardless, now that we have a kid involved, it does put Jeff's walls up, right? Like Jeff is such a public figure and he does show everything and talks about everything so openly. So it does make sense that he would share everything and then start to say, oh, wait, am I going too far? Because, um, you know, some of my fans now know where she goes to school, et cetera. And he's in the middle of some crazy custody battle with Gage. We know this like about child support and custody and days and whatever. And we can't do that. Right. So any fan that would ever overstep a line like that should be stopped. He also, you know, there was like, I think there's, I think there's been things building with maybe him and just fans in general. Right. For example, he's been very open about his morning coffee routine, that he goes to a coffee shop every single morning before his show. He meets with his co-hosts. He chats about what he can talk about. And then like people will now show up at that coffee shop and make it like an event, right? So I do believe it, I do believe that Jeff has started to, and this is not just Sarah centric, this is general fan centric saying, uh-oh, gotta pull back boundaries are getting crossed. Now, if you guys watched Flipping Out, there was a huge, huge dust up with Jeff and Jenny Poulos regarding Jenny utilizing Jeff Lewis's names to get free things. I think it had something to do with her honeymoon, her wedding. Can't remember specifically, but she was like reaching out to some of her clients, his and her clients, and talking to her about, you know, or talking to them about like performing or doing something or whatever. Okay. And I think that my guess is that, um, you know, this is something that Jeff is very upset about in general. It really bothered him when Jenny did it. He probably bothered him when other people have done it. And so people, I think, know that Jeff is a very big fan of promoting his friends and talking about their products, but never trying to take advantage of them in any way. And he doesn't like when people use his name to get stuff. That being said, this is all alleged. Sarah had an event here in Los Angeles last weekend. A lot of you guys knew about it. Some of you guys went. I did not go. I was invited. I didn't go because I had prior engagements. My son had a piano recital. So I will absolutely never go to um, anything over a child event, right? Any mom probably wouldn't. Um, so I didn't go. That being said, during this event or right before this event on Friday's show, Jeff had Margaret Johnson, jo Joseph's. Why do I always want to say Johnson? Is there a Margaret Johnson out there that I'm not friends with? So Margaret Joseph's was on his show and she had mentioned to Jeff the night before they went out to drinks or dinner. And she had mentioned, mentioned to, to Jeff that she sent out cases of soiree, that's her canned mocktail, to an event that she, apparently the way she communicated this with Jeff, I don't know, was something along the lines of a Jeff Lewis affiliated event. Margaret th thought that. That's important here. Okay. So she shared that with Jeff. And I think at this point, Jeff had had it up to here. Like I said, not just with Sarah, but with maybe many fans that have potentially um, 
crossed the line with him. So he came on his show and he said, pretty point blank, without naming names, I would not I would appreciate that no one uses my name. If you hear from anyone about anything, trying to get product or an event or anything, but it's not Jeff, myself, or Shane, which is like his right-hand man, then you absolutely can assume we're not involved, right? You can absolutely assume we're not affiliated. I heard this on Friday when I was going to pick up my kids from school and I was like, ugh right? Because immediately I was like, that's about Sarah. He didn't mention Sarah's name, but he did talk about that someone was having an event. Now, I believe two things can be true. I would love to see this DM personally from what Sarah or Sarah's event producer had sent to Margaret. But according to her, the message was very much a non-Jeff Lewis affiliated message. According to her, she says that she sent a message from Jeff Lewis Obsessed, a fan account, talking about the event, and Margaret was happy to to give. Also Chaz Dean, also Leah Black. Now, that being said, what was done is actually not that bad. What Sarah did, meaning going to get the product for her event in which she was charging tickets to, but she was trying to get gift bags stuffed and given to her audience as a gesture of kindness. I actually don't believe that there were bad intentions there on Sarah's part at all. I really don't. I think Sarah did what many people do, which is try to stuff gift bags with products to give your your audience and your people some sort of a, um, you know, a, a gift, like a reward for coming, a treat. I don't think the crime, the mistake was that bad. I really don't. And you know what? Jeff was annoyed, but Jeff can go torched earth. And he did not. He didn't name Sarah's name. He kept it pretty professional. A lot of people listened to it and said it wasn't that bad. Like it was bad for anyone involved that understood, but it wasn't so bad. Like Jeff didn't attack her. He didn't go off on her. He just kind of basically put it out there as a blanket statement to all people involved. Anyone that listens to the show and has events because he feels like maybe this is going to be something that's going to continue to happen. And anyone that is a chump, like his his people who are listening, who have products, who are getting approached by people saying, hey, I'm a Jeff Lewis fan. So I think it was a very much a blanket statement and it wasn't personal. So of course, just like everyone else, we assumed we would hear from Sarah. And this is, I think, where things started to go a little different, right? <sighs> the comments are coming in real fast. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting... Um, you know, I'm not losing comments. Shanyan, (laughs) Ray. Um, So here's where I think things went askew. People love to talk online. The Facebook groups were Facebooking. The Reddit groups were Redditing. Okay. My Instagram DMs were going off. Everyone heard this. Everyone assumed. And then everyone was waiting. What will Sarah say? Now, remember, Sarah is someone who is a uh, a very active person on social media, and she was being on social media all weekend long. So I think everyone was watching to see what would happen. She was posting throughout the weekend, but she didn't say a freaking word about it. And this was where I think it started to go wrong. Because as you, as, if you don't approach something, if you don't say something to you, all these people that you know are talking about you, you want to make sure that, like, you need to kind of like nip in the bud. And I don't think she, bud or butt? Are we nipping in the butt? Are we nipping in the bud? I think the best thing here would have been to just immediately approach the conversation on her Facebook, on her Instagram, wherever people pass this shit around. And she could have said, I listened to the show. I immediately decided to return every gift. I had no idea that I was overstepping boundaries. I didn't have bad intentions. I apologize. I am sorry. I apologize to Jeff, to Shane, and to all the chumps. This was not done with bad intentions. We're going to go on and have our Sarah from Texas event, and all is good. But she didn't. So everyone was left saying, what is happening? What is happening? Then on Monday, she came onto our show, 
And, or sorry, Monday morning, Jeff Lewis threw her name out there, not her name, but like they talked about Soiree a little bit and Kelly Dodd kind of like threw a name in Sarah from Texas or Jeff Lewis obsessed. And then later in the after show, um, they talked very openly. It was with Todd and, and his wife, Carrie, and they talked with Jeff very openly about Sarah from Texas. And once again, Jeff was very kind in the sense that he said, I have a good rapport with her. I like her. She's a nice woman. Um, I like her. However, boundaries have been crossed. And he he went on a little bit with more detail, but he was very clear. Again, Jeff doesn't give a crap about hurting people's feelings sometimes if he's mad. He could have said a million, a million worse things, but he didn't. He kept it pretty nice for Jeff, right? And then once again, the response, I think, from Sarah was very, um, it just wasn't what you want to hear when you know someone messes up. It really should have just come down to apology, remorse, make it right. And where it was, was deny, defend, and attack, right? Like, all of a sudden, you know, and I feel for Sarah because like the 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 people, the Jeff Lewis listeners are out in full force right now over this. It is like a huge storm. And the only reason I'm talking about it right now is because every single one of my DMs and messages, as you guys can see in the comments, are about this. It is insane how many people want to talk about this. And I will say, I did have a conversation with Sarah. I did say a comment yesterday in my show. I'm going to apologize for it where I said I'm doing dry January, so this is entertainment for me. That came off mean. I don't mean this is entertainment. This is fun. I don't like seeing someone struggle and get taken down. I don't agree with herd mentality and I don't agree with group, agree with group bullying, but I also don't agree with blindly defending someone that did in my opinion, acted wrong. And like I said, what she did, her original mistake is not that crazy, but her response to it has been mind blowing. And I don't, I can't defend that behavior. I just can't defend that behavior. And I wouldn't defend that behavior if it was my best friend. Right. And I'm not saying in any way, like you guys are very, very, um, you know, some of you guys are very like frustrated with it. And then some of you guys are very mad at me because you feel like I'm not being a good friend. I did reach out to Sarah privately two times on the weekend on Sunday morning. And all I heard back was it's how amazing it was. And then Monday after her live, when I saw how badly it went, I sent her another message that said how I am here for her. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I can be a fax girl too. <laughs> I am here for her. I am sorry that she's going through this. I believe she can get through this. And if she can, if she needs anything, just let me know. So I don't like that I'm being attacked by people for just being in this world. I was not at the event. I had nothing to do with the event. Okay. I run daily dose of Donna. I'm not daily dose of, you know, Heather Gay. Or or anyone else. Like I am, I am me. I do my own show. I said to Zach last night, the biggest mistake you can make right now is create an entire brand around another person. Biggest mistake. Absolutely don't do it. Because that person can turn on you. And then what? Now what? Right? Um, I don't want to feel like I am doing the wrong thing here. I feel like I've gotten attacked by multiple people in comments. And honestly, like, I didn't get like such a nice call this morning from Sarah herself. Like she's mad at me for this popcorn comment. I need to pull myself away. I'm pulling out just like every, you know, like Nick Cannon should. I'm pulling out. <laughs> I am pulling out of that. And I will not align myself with people that, you know, and this is in every world that don't behave in a proper, in a way that I can stand by. And I'm not saying I'm not aligning with her ever again, but I don't, 
I can't defend behavior where like that. It's just, I am going right now. I am in a course correction period in my own life. You guys have probably figure this out in your own, like, you know, with whatever you're, you're seeing on my show in, in January, this whole month has been a very challenging month for me personally. And I'm, I'm Shep, I'm Shep. <laughs> my name is Shep and I'm course correcting as well in some many ways. Okay. I'm not Shep. I'm not, I don't have like an alcoholic problem like Shep does, but you know what I mean? in in a lot of other ways, and I have, I am currently in a process right now where I have made mistakes and I'm recognizing them and I am severely remorseful and incredibly um, committed to changing certain behaviors, okay? So it's important to do soul searching. Victim behavior is not it. This is for everyone out there, okay? Victim behavior is not it. And I don't wanna get on the on the receiving end of, of something, like I did something wrong here, guys. 30 minutes we're already into the show. I have, I literally was watching my son sing Taylor Swift on a piano during her event. I had nothing to do with her event, with the planning, with the during, and with the post. Got it? Okay. <laughs> um, lots of you guys are responding about these glasses. Do you guys know, I, I spent so much money on Warby Parker glasses, so much money. And then I realized my friend, Stacy. shout out Stacy. She told me about this company, Zenny. Z-E-N-N-I, you put in your prescription. You guys, these are $30 with my prescription. I have astigmatism. I need a prescription. This is not just a reader. 30 bucks they send to your house. Okay, Z-E-N-N-I. Anyway, um, I want you guys to uh, leave me alone about this. <laughs> and um, that's it. That's it. I'm not going to talk about it anymore unless something huge comes up. But I, I need to pull out quickly, quickly from that. It made me feel yucky. I don't like it. Um, guys, we got to talk about Monica. Got to talk about Monica. And we got to talk about Salt Lake City, the reunion last night, which to me was really telling in a lot of ways. You guys, you know what's problematic is that I wanted to hate Monica more than anyone, but I'm concerned because Heather Gay has come off a little bit more, how shall I say, hypocritical? Hypocritical? Do you guys think? Do you guys think? I personally feel like Monica, and I posted this on the Daily Dose of Donna Facebook group. By the way, we had like 80 new members yesterday in the Facebook group. So thank you guys. And, and thank you for all the new subscribers here. But I believe that Monica was... So she's so childish. Seeing her argue reminds me, I said it, I think yesterday, reminds me of a teenager. Like, honestly, it's like a teenager before she gets sent away to, <laughs> I know this is going to be, <laughs> should I say it or not? Before she gets sent away to Provo. That's, is that what the name of the place is? Where Paris Hilton went in Utah? Like she is absolutely on another level immature. She cannot fight with anyone. She cannot have a normal conversation. She just likes to mock. Oh, shut up. Oh, you F you. Oh, you're old. You're ugly. She's like basically my eight-year-old when he says like, your mom. That's what I feel like she, she and I really want to say your mom, Monica, your mom. <laughs> Where is LD Millionaire these days? She overdid it. Had Monica remained calm, cool, and collected like Angie did, Angie K, I think she would have come off so much better. But the problem was is that she went into that reunion, reunion ready to double down on all her mistakes. Sounds familiar. And I think what happens when people do this when people like to double down from their mis on their mistakes, it's it it drives such a strong wedge between anyone that was potentially considering forgiving, right? I think Heather, I think Lisa, all of them, I think they could have had a moment where had Monica come to the reunion with hello, remorse, with accountability, with apologies, with 
some sort of vulnerability about like, listen, you guys, I was a really lost person. I was really lost. I was really struggling. I made mistakes. I'm so sorry. It could have been a little bit more forgivable down the line. Like I do think she could have still been on the show. The problem is she came in there not only fighting, she came in there fighting dirty and then brought the burn book. Receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots, burn book. And while it is amazing housewife behavior because we love this kind of drama, it was a great season. She said some things and did some things that made me very concerned about her mental health yesterday. For example, she set up Jen Shaw's security cameras in her home. Okay, this is not her outdoor ring doorbell. This is inside her home security cameras. And she was listening and watching Jen's interactions probably on a daily basis. I'm sorry, I don't believe that Monica was like, if I wanted to, I could. No, Monica was watching from beginning till end. You know that. She was like spending, you know what she was treating it? She was treating it like the, what were the big brother cameras, you guys? All of you Big Brother fans, what we went through the summer together. Um, the Big Brother, you know, like the 24 7 um cameras. She was probably sitting there with her popcorn just watching Jen Shaw talk to everyone, right? It is absolutely um not okay. It's not okay. It's scary AF. And then she took stuff that she learned from those cameras and used it on the show. For example, the Snoop Dogg comment towards Lisa Barlow. It was wrong. Live feeds. Thank you. It was wrong. It was so wrong. So now you have a moment where you see potential stalker behavior. What is a stalker? Well, Monica tried to um, describe it last night, but she said stalker um, – Stalker definition. She said, when you do something in a recurring manner, okay, a stalker is a person who harasses or persecutes someone with unwanted and obsessive attention. Uh, um, oh, and then there's like a hunter, stalker and a hunter. I don't think we're talking, I don't think Monica's hunting down Jen, but a stalker is someone who is, who is seriously, um, obsessively and aggressively pursuing someone to the point of harassment. So, um, so this woman, Monica did this, not only did she do it multiple times in the inside of her house, but she was driving past her house and posting it and filming it. And then she went on some crazy tangent where the F where she tried to say that the FBI had asked her to like check in and see if Jen was drinking and driving. All the women were la laughing hysterically. It was literally like insane. It was insane, insane behavior. Monica's unwell. Um, if you're 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 a mother of four people, four kids, you're a single mother of four kids, and you are driving past your old employer slash friend's home filming it. You're doing everything you can, putting stuff online to try to take the person down. This is not healthy behavior, right? So I personally, the second I started to see that kind of behavior, it made me say, uh-oh, you can't go back. Now, Lisa Barlow didn't help herself out yesterday at all because Lisa is almost as immature as Monica. She can't stop talking. What was the scene where someone said, is there a pause button for you? Was it, um, was it, who said that to Lisa? Maybe it was Monica. Are you ever, like, do you ever stop? And Monica's like, I'm on play every day. I'm on play every day. Um, so, so anyway, uh, she, she definitely, um, did not help her case whatsoever. She absolutely kept going out into, Mary said it, she absolutely kept going into the conversation like, yes, you did. Yes. Yes. You're not good. You're not good. No, Monica. No. Oh my God. You can't argue. I'm like, shh. <laughs> Someone turn on, turn on the, um, the, the, like the, or turn off the mic, right? Like cut the mic. Anyway. Um, so, so I personally feel like Lisa didn't do her any, herself any favors. That being said, I still love Elisa Barlow. I do. Mary. I loved Mary last night. Why do I like Mary? You guys, something's wrong with me. This is like childhood trauma shit. Like, why do I like Mary? She's a horrible human being, but I love her. 
I love her. Um, her comments with Heather about how she felt like Heather shamed her because she looked so good. Heather did look so good. Heather completely has a different face though now. In 2024, Heather is a different human being. If you watch her on Watch What Happens Live, new face, new hair, new teeth. She got the abso absolutely Mauricio special. Mauricio special. And okay, so, so I personally feel like um, at the end of the day, Whitney said absolutely nothing. She brings nothing to the show anymore, I don't think. But she will probably come back. I think Meredith will come back. Obviously, Heather Gay will come back. But this is a little bit confusing because Heather Gay, <clears throat> Heather has had a very tricky couple seasons. Two seasons ago, she was fan favorite. First, first and second season, fan favorite. Then last season, she had a really tough season because of the whole Jen Shaw thing, right? She started to get a little too big for her britches. She started to think of herself a little bit too much on a high horse, I think. And she really, really backed Jen Shaw up way more than anyone else did. Then we find out now that Jen Shaw, in fact, did give her the black eye. We have no idea how. There was no information on how this black eye came about. But a hundred percent, um, you know, she definitely, definitely got a black eye from Jen Shaw. Why didn't they tell us how? It was Heather just like too drunk and didn't remember it. We saw some footage from that room when they were back in San Diego last year. You, it was un, you can hear it, but you could tell that they were talking about the black eye. Heather lied through her damn teeth about this black eye for over a year. She lied to every single reporter. She lied to press. She lied to her own friends, probably. She lied to everyone. She even insinuated that maybe producers and someone else had made this comment and said something or, or it had been part of this black eye. And he called her out last night. He said, this is a serious problem. You you put people's jobs on the line. You lied to our network, to your employer. Like there is a lot of problems here with Heather. Why do I not think Heather should be treated the same as Monica? Because a lot of people are saying, is this hypocritical? She expects Monica to get fired, but was trying to protect Jen Shaw and also doesn't expect to be fired herself. Here's what I think. I think that um, Debbie is funny. She goes, it was a UDI, an unidentified drunk injury. Um, here's what I th think. I think that if, if, um, if Heather, okay, Heather protected Jen Shaw for reasons we kind of don't really understand, except for the fact that I truly believe it came out of a place of fear. I think Heather was scared shitless of Jen Shaw, as I would be, by the way. Scared shitless of Jen Shaw. I think that she was worried that Jen was going to come after her in some capacity. I think Heather has a lot of unresolved and like um, childhood trauma, PTSD from growing up in such a strong faith. And I think that there was some probably potentially some triggering situations with Jen and that. And she felt like there was like a little bit of something. There was obviously something going on there. Jen had something on Heather. I don't know if it was like, facts or, or just fear. I don't know, but there was something going on there. Now, in the meantime, Monica came in as a lie and it's true. She really did. She came in as a lie. She wasn't who she said she was. She wasn't owning up to what she said she did. Although she did tell Andy that casting knew. I'm going to tell you guys one thing about casting that I know. Um, I, I haven't worked in reality casting. I've only worked in scripted casting. So it's a very different experience because when you're working in scripting, scripted casting, you're basing your decision on mostly their performance and their resume, but less about personality, which is why sometimes you end up hiring like the worst diva or the most horrible person on set. You don't really know that unless they're, you know, there's an ongoing reputation about these people. But I will say that I, I think with reality casting, it is all personality. It is all personality and who you are in your life, right? What you do, who do you spend your time with? What do you do for fun? How would you react in certain situations? If casting, and I, I would be shocked, shocked, if casting of Salt Lake City didn't, um, if they knew, that Monica was behind reality Von Tees. 
an account on social media that was completely like breaking the fourth wall between Salt Lake City, talking horrible about the cast, going all in, tagging everyone. I mean, all these things. There's absolutely no way that they would keep that to themselves and not share it with producers. So if casting knew, that means production knew. If production knew, that probably means that the network knew. This is not something that production would want to maybe hide for this purpose, like liability reasons. If casting doesn't know, and the only way casting would know is if it was either on tape, on camera somehow with Monica stating it in an audition because the way reality casting works is everything's being filmed. You may have one really quick original meeting without cameras, but most likely everything is on tape. And the more you get into it, the more you're on tape or it's on um, like a written application. So they would have proof that they knew. I don't believe casting would be so stupid to not share that with production if they knew. They wouldn't keep it to themselves because that is a huge, huge, huge part of who she is. So either she actually didn't tell casting and says she did, which I wouldn't be surprised because she's a known liar, or she did tell casting, they told production, production knew and put her on the show anyway. But we don't know that. And production probably won't tell us that because it would make them look awful if they knew and put her on the show anyway. Andy Cohen this morning had talked about the fact that she's on pause. He's not calling it on pause. He's saying we're taking a break. We need her to kind of let, um, you know, let like things need to die down. I think they recognize what a good reality character th she is. I feel strongly that she's going to end up on Traitors or the House of Villains or something else. I absolutely don't believe that she will, um, you know, end up on Salt Lake City again, at least not for a season because Zach, Zach, um, Zach Peter just texted me because Andy said, um, I believe that what I saw at the end of the reunion, how how upset and triggered most of these cast members were by the fact that they let someone in like this that felt unsafe and they didn't feel like they could trust her again. All of these things led to Andy deciding like this is an unusable situation. Like it's an unusable situation. They're shooting, they're starting the next season, season five, I believe it is, on February 5th. That's really, really soon. So I don't know, in my opinion, I don't know what will end up um, happening with Monica. I don't think that that rest of the cast wants to shoot with her on Salt Lake City. I don't. Um, Heather did come off a little bit like holier than thou. And I do feel bad for her because she was really honest. She said the worst part about being a housewife is the social media trolls. I could second that. The worst part about having a podcast and being on YouTube is social social media trolls. There's so many great ones, but there's also a lot of negative. And it's, it is it is hard not to take it personally when people come after you. So she was like, I slept with the enemy, basically. I let the enemy into my life. I brought the troll in and became vulnerable and honest with the troll. And that is a very, very it's a strong feeling of betrayal, right? Because you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know. It feels very like Dr. Death or Dirty John or whatever, you know? And um, so then, okay, so that being said, Heather does come off a little bit holier than thou by saying, you know, she ruined what the housewives are. And Kiki Monique from the Talk of Shame posted the best little reel. She's like, uh, actually, this is what the housewives are. It's like Teresa flipping the table. It's all the fights. It's all the drama. It's Heather puking, peeing in her, in her Sprinter van earlier this season. Like the housewives are not, you know, we're not watching The Crown. Okay, so let's just like call it what it is. Call it what it is. But I do believe Monica, she had a moment where she could have come in there with some vulnerability and some accountability and some apology and remorse and she did it. And so I think she shit the bed for herself. Honestly, I do think. Because sometimes, I mean, this is, this is what this show should be called. Sometimes the crime isn't even as bad as the way that you're dealing with it. Or I should say the mistake isn't even as bad as the way that you try to fix that mistake. Everyone makes mistakes. I've made mistakes. You guys have made mistakes. Taylor from Southern Charm has made mistakes. We've all made mistakes. I guess the difference is some of us are able to, you know, move through it in the proper manner because you really do want to make things better. And some will, you know, 
hold down until the end of uh, end of time how you know they are in the right and they are the victim and and for that reason it's very hard um I hope you guys understand uh, a lot of what I talked about today. I will release my Patreon today. I'm happy to answer any other additional questions about everything I talked about today. So jump on over to the Facebook group, Daily Dose of Donna. I'll start a, a thread over there asking, what do you want me to cover on Patreon or what questions you have over there? I appreciate you guys so much. Um, thank you for standing by me and understanding that while I do report on the drama, I personally am not involved in all the drama at all. So I am just reporting on it. Um, and that is that, you guys. Have an amazing rest of your Wednesday, and I will see you tomorrow.